Hey everyone, Connie here, and welcome to my blind reaction to My Hero Academia, Season 4, Episode 9. So yeah, we're here with another episode, um, and I'll be straight with you right off the bat. I do know something going into this. I don't know the context of it, but I know that, um, I believe Crimson Riot is his name, is in this episode in some way, shape, or form. Again, I don't know the context. I don't know how he's in this episode. I don't know like what he does. Um, for those who don't know, Crimson Riot is the pro hero who inspired Kirishima, Red Riot. Um, and so I also know who voices him. This is how I actually found out he's in this episode. <laughs> Uh, because the voice actor is someone who I'm friends with on Facebook, who I follow on Twitter, who I've met in real life, and that is Brian Massey, who is also known for voicing characters like Lad Russo in Bakuno, uh, Oolong in the Dragon Ball franchise, etc., etc. Uh, Brian Massey's a fantastic voice actor, and um, yeah, so he announced that he is happy to be voicing Red Riot. Um, now, again, I don't know the context. It might be a flashback, something Kirishima's thinking back to, like maybe seen on TV, something like uh, Deku does with, uh, with, with All Might. But it could also be in current day, with the entire situation going down at the Shie Hakai size uh, base. Maybe he pops in and helps them out. You never know. Uh, but last episode, we had Tamaki. Tamaki got his chance to shine. We learned uh, a little more about his connection with Mirio and how far back it goes. Um, and even got to see Tamaki kind of break out of his shell a little bit. Uh, and I still stand by what I said last time as well, that I don't think that this should be like a permanent thing, that I think that he should kind of go back into his more reserved self after this, because I feel it's more realistic to do so. It's more believable for him to have like this one moment of great victory, but that he still has to work on this overall, his mental and emotional state. And so he's going to go back to it. Because people don't get over that kind of mental and emotional anxiety with one victory. It just doesn't happen. Um, so it's like, yeah, he, he's got some ways to go. But it was cool getting to see him really, uh, really, like, let loose. Um, because Fat Gum was the one who said that out of that group who was there... With them at the moment, Tamaki's actually the strongest, like in terms of his quirk and general ability, which means that Fekum is saying that he's stronger than Aizawa, even than uh, uh, everyone who was there, uh, but especially Aizawa, who we know is a really strong, capable hero. Um, so it's like, yeah, that's impressive. For a student to be that strong. But I mean he's part of the big three for a reason. And that seems to definitely be his reason. Um, his just general ability. Um, I mean he could be very smart too. Mirio's not great at testing. But Tamaki might be. Um, I don't know about uh, Nejire though. Hard to know with her. She definitely seems capable in terms of her quirk. But... I don't know if she may be as capable as Tamaki. I don't know about her book smarts either. I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. So last episode was really good. We got to see some uh, new villains, parts of the uh, Eight Bullets from uh, the Shie Hakai side. We also got to see Mimic's quirk. Uh, Mimic has the ability to basically uh, possess something, but he can't possess something normally bigger than a refrigerator. Uh, so he used the quirk-enhancing drug we had seen before to possess the walls of a hallway. 
Now, I, I mentioned last time how I think we still got a, a couple more episodes to go for this uh, this raid, and I still stand by that. I, I think that we've still, with how big of a deal this current uh, storyline is, with how big of a deal this current uh, raid, just in general, is, they're definitely, I feel, going to put everything they can into it. I don't think we're finishing it this episode. And honestly, I have my doubts we'll finish it next episode either. I think we at least have, after this episode, two more to go, at least. Um, I might be wrong. I might be wrong. I might finish up next episode, but I, I don't see them doing that with the current pacing of things. I mean, there's still the other guy who's currently with... Uh, with Overhaul, we need to see him fight. I would like to see Overhaul fight, but I don't know if that's going to happen. <sighs> Plus, there's still, like, four bullets that we haven't seen. Because if, if Mimic's a bullet, which I presume he is, um, let's see, because we've seen one, two, three, the three who faced Tamaki, we saw Mimic, which makes four, and then we saw the guy who crashed outside, making five. Okay, so we have three more. We have three more then. If my if my math is correct, and if um, Mimic is a bullet, which again I presume he is. Um, but I'm I'm excited to get back to more of this. Uh, I'm hoping it's good, and I I can't wait to hear Brian Massey as Red Riot uh, or Crimson Riot. Even if he doesn't have a massive role, um, I just I I really like Brian Massey's voice acting. I think he's great, and yeah, it's just it's cool to know that he's now in My Hero Academia. <laughs> so many voice actors I like are in this show. I mean, J. Michael Tatum's in it. Uh, crap, what's his name? Chris Sabat, and. and so many others who keep coming in, and, and it, it makes sense. Like, a lot of the same voice actors will work on all these kinds of different shows together and all, but still. And it's like, it, it's just cool. And it's it's cool getting to hear Brian Massey's voice in more things, because it seems like I don't get, I, I don't hear his voice in a lot of the big name stuff as much. He does a lot of roles, just not as much of the big name stuff as like as like say J. Michael Tatum does. J. Michael Tatum's in a lot more of the just bigger shows. So it's always good getting to hear uh Brian Massey and more. Uh also, fun fact, Brian Massey was in the Nicola Nicholas Cage movie Drive Hard. Or I think it's called Drive Hard. Something like that. But he was a cop in that movie. Uh, anywho, anywho, <laughs> um, before we get any further into uh, procrastination here. <sighs> Ooh, uh, excuse me. Let's just get on with this. So when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades black, then fades back in. Everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episode. So that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. And we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. So before anything else, I, I need to mention something because I, I don't want to forget about it. When Kirishima is heading to UA... And all, and he's dyed and spiked up his hair and everything. Uh, and Mina comes up to him and everything, and she said, "She says, like she notices his hair. It's she says you've got horns like me." And he, he doesn't deny. He doesn't like say, "Oh, it's more. It's because of Crimson Riot." He says, "Yeah." This implies that Kirishima not only was inspired by Crimson Riot, but by Mina. That Mina's heroic actions that day, both of those days, both the way she got those bullies and the bullied kid to kind of come together and become friends, um, 
and the way that she stood up to that villain despite being terrified, those two actions helped inspire Kirishima. And yes, Crimson Riot definitely was the uh, what was definitely the big turning point for him, seeing that Crimson Riot video. But Mina's actions helped just as much. See, because Crimson Riot's not someone he's met, not someone he's known. But seeing someone he knows, a classmate, put that, put literally Crimson Riot's words into action. That, I feel, really did inspire him in an important way. So it's like, it's really cool to see that. To see Mina inspire someone in this way. Not only because of what it did for Kirishima, but because of what it does for Mina. Mina, up to this point in the series, has been a goofy character. She She's not entirely comic relief, but she's a goofy character who's played a lot of times more for laughs or to lighten up the mood. She's a very happy, peppy character. So yeah. Um, she's had some cool moments, a couple cool moments, but for the most part, she's she hasn't really had a time to shine. We haven't seen her like be this awesome, amazing hero, have these like great moments of action or hero her heroics or anything. So when we see this episode and see the way she acts in this, see how her heroic nature come forth in, let's be honest, the same way that Deku's did. As even Kirishima said in this episode, the body moving on its own. A hero, the hero's moment, as I like to call it. The body moving before the mind can even process it. Mina had that hero's moment. And even though it was when she was in middle school, we see that Mina is truly, just as much as Deku, a hero in training. That she is, she has that hero spirit. That she is truly wanting to make this world a better place as a hero. And that's awesome. That's awesome that we get that development for her. Because, like I said, Mina hasn't had a lot of development, hasn't had a lot of character moments. So to see this for her, even though it was, again, mainly used in this episode for Kirishima's sake, it still helped her character, too. And honestly, made me respect her character so much more. Just... Like, seriously. It was just really awesome. <laughs> and, of course, this episode definitely continued to bring Kirishima into the spotlight. And continued to make him have this have these great moments. I mean, we, we've seen that earlier this same season, the same arc. Um, so Kirishima is definitely a big player in this arc. And we've seen this kind of thing happen before. During the uh, licensing exam, uh, Aoyama had a big moment. Um, during the Stain arc, Ida was a big player. We have these, in each of these different arcs, we have different members of the class kind of getting their time to shine. And I noticed they're, they've even been doing it with these students, members of the class, who otherwise don't get a time to shine as much. And Mina and Aoyama are big examples of that. Uh, we had we had a great moment with Yaoya Rozu when she was teaming up uh, with uh, Todoroki in the final, uh, the midterm exams, not the final exams, the midterm exams against Aizawa. Uh, we had a great momo, uh, moment there. So it's like, we're just building on these characters. Yes, we have our main characters we focus on for the most part in the 
overall main story. We have the we have Deku, we have Bakugo, uh, and those are the ones we kind of tend to focus on the most in this series, naturally. Um, but then we have all these other characters who get those moments to shine. All these other characters who aren't just forgotten about. And I'm sure that a lot of these other characters who we haven't had those moments yet for, like Sato, uh, will get their moments to shine. I'm very sure that they will have those hero moments at some point in this series. And, and I'm, I'm excited for that. This is one of the reasons why I love this show. Yes, it has a large ensemble cast. There are a lot of characters. But the way that Horikoshi is able to give them all this depth, make them all feel like they're important to the story, is, well, it's important. <laughs> it's, it's really good writing. It makes it so that none of these characters feel out of place, except Mineta. Because Mineta is fucking scum. <laughs> um, but seriously, Mineta feels so fucking out of place. <laughs> but Horikoshi's making sure that all of these students have their times to shine. Even Mineta technically had a time to shine with his uh, with his midterm exam against uh, with he was working with Saro against Midnight. So yeah. Even he had a moment, and I, I, I hate that he had a moment, but he did, and I won't deny it. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. In all seriousness, I just really love what they're doing with this arc with Kirishima. And we even kind of get the reasoning behind his heavy focus on manliness in this episode. Because if you, if you saw in the flashback, he mentioned that specifically after his failure. He mentioned not feeling very manly, not feeling like a man. I think that's where that first came from. And then being inspired by both Mina and Crimson Riot, he vowed to never feel that way again. To never feel that helpless, that unmanly. And I like how in this, it, it's kind of equating manliness, not to like just being big and tough and, you know, generally stereotypical masculinity stuff. No, it's equating it to being heroic, caring, helpful, to being a good person. To Kirishima, manliness means the same as being a hero. They're synonymous to him. And that's why he always brings that up. Because to him, that manliness is his goal. It's his dream of being a hero. It's what he strives for. It's what he feels he needs to be. And that's great. I think that's really respectable. Now, outside of all of that in this episode, we also got to see Fat Gum's skinny form, apparently. So, Fat Gum not only can absorb hits because of his fat absorption quirk, but apparently, if he absorbs enough hits on a consistent uh, level, then using up the energy in order to do that allows him to burn away his fat and release the stored energy in a massive hit. As was very much put in metaphorical terms in this episode, he goes from a shield to a spear. He goes from defense to offense. It's uh, like a switch flips within him, and he changes his style of fighting for that moment. Now, I don't know if he has to bulk up again, like, like, honestly, Momo has to for her quirk, because her quirk uses up her uh, stored energy and everything she has to eat to restore it, 
um, or even Sato, technically, who eats uh, as part of his quirk. But I, I don't know if Fat Gum has to eat to restore his normal, well, fat form, or if that will just come up, up or if that will just return naturally. I don't know exactly how that works, but that's a really fascinating side to his ability. The fact that he can do that. And we've already talked about super moves and everything. I, I kind of feel like that is definitely his super move. <laughs> um, that is definitely a kind of last resort uh, thing. And, and I, I, I assume that he can release it at different stages. He doesn't have to wait that long, necessarily. Um, like, he can still release the stored energy at different uh, points. Uh, to increase his attack in general. Um, now, most of this episode was kind of just continuing on with the aftermath of last time. It's like, oh, Tamaki's done with his battle, everyone else is running through, but Mimic catches up with them. Mimic tries to take out Aizawa because logic. <laughs> Um, but instead, both Kirishima and, uh, Fat Gum end up jumping in the way and stopping him. Mimic sends Fat Gum and Kirishima to these other two, one of which has a physical-based quirk that allows him to punch really hard. <laughs> I mean, that's basically what it is. And the other one has barriers. So, they prove to be extremely, uh troublesome at first, especially with the punchy guy. I can't remember their names, by the way. Um, just destroying uh, even Kirishima's upgraded hardening, which is insane, because, again, it was just a few episodes back where we saw Kirishima, Kirishima first use his unbreakable mode. And so, to now, just a few episodes later, see his unbreakable mode, well, broken, is insane. It's like, holy crap, <laughs> these guys are not messing around. These, these uh, villains in the Shia Hakaisai of the Eight Bullets, they're not messing around. So this guy's uh, strength-based quirk is really strong. He breaks through um, Kirishima's Unbreakable, and he's basically leaving it to where Fat Gum can't really do anything. Um, and then, of course, the barrier is a problem, too. Kirishima manages to come back from that after we get to see his backstory and everything. Um, and he uh, starts, <coughs> excuse me, putting up a, def a defense against uh, Punchy Guy. Uh, and all this time, Fat Gum had built up the uh, fat absorption, so he he's able to release it after Kirishima... Uh, attacks the um, the barrier and is knocked back. So Fat Gum breaks through the barrier and with all that stored energy also blasts the uh, two bullets uh, back and taking them out. It's a, it's a really strong scene. It's a really great scene both for Fat Gum and Kirishima and the episode really, again, just did wonders for Kirishima and Mina's characters. Um, so it, it was really, really just fantastic to see, honestly. I, I really, really enjoyed it. And, and I like how, in the episode when they're running through the halls, Fat Gum notes how everyone's, like, not, uh, uh, believing in Tamaki. And then he's like, oh, Kirishima, it's not manly to not believe in your fellow heroes. And, and he's and, and Kirishima's like, I believe in you, Tamaki. And it's like, god damn it. Um, but yeah, it's like, Tamaki's like, upset that every, that no one's, or no, Fat Gum's upset that no one's believing in Tamaki. But then, Fat Gum didn't believe enough in Kirishima as well, and he admits that. So it's like, I, I kind of like that. It, it kind of shows that, that Fat Gum admitted to himself that he was kind of being a little hypocritical there. But I like that. It humanizes these characters, which the show already does an amazing job at. But still, it's great to see that continue with all these other characters who keep being introduced. So yeah, I like that.
Uh, I really do. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, I, I just, I really like this episode. I really love what they did with Mina and Kirishima. And, 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 I, and going back to that, just real quick, I'll be honest, I, I was kind of meh on Mina's character before this. Because, I mean, I liked her in terms of her personality and stuff, but in terms of her, for lack of a better word, usefulness in the series and everything, I just felt like she was just kind of there. And I felt like she was kind of one of those examples in the class, especially, of characters who are just there. Characters who just really uh, don't have any role, like, real role to play in the series. And I honestly felt that way for a long time, for a lot of this show. I mean, I always believed she would get a, she would get a moment for sure, but for the most part, I kind of viewed her, again, just as not a waste of time, but a character who's just there. But this episode definitely uh, made me view her in a different light. It definitely made me see her, again, as I put it, like her heroic actions, her heroic mindsets, and allow me to uh, view her as more of a hero in the same vein as Deku. Because, again, they, the entire actions they took there kind of mirror each other in a way. I mean, heck, even Kirishima kind of brought that up. <laughs> um. So it's, I just really feel it did wonders for her character that really just makes me respect and care for her that much more, like a lot of these other characters. Like Sue, or Bakugo, or, or Deku, or Uraka, and so on and so on. It makes me care for these characters that much more, and like them that much more, when they're given moments like this, when they're developed in these ways. Even, again, in Mina's case, where it's not even, like, focused on her, specifically. It's a Kirishima-focused episode. But still. And like I said, it's it, it surprised me that she and Kirishima are the ones going back. You would think it would be more like her and Kaminari or someone uh, who, would, who would have that history with each other. But no, no. That's, I think that's actually a really interesting uh, idea to put forth as well, having those two have that connection. Even if they weren't, like, friends or anything, they, they were still classmates. They knew of each other. They had had interactions. I just think that's cool. I just really think that this episode was cool. So tell me down in the comments below what you thought of this episode of My Hero Academia. And thank you so much for tuning in. For now, I'm Connie and I'm signing off. See y'all next time. Hey everyone, Connie here and thank you so much for tuning in to today's video. If you want to check out any of my social media links and more, please check them out over to the side. And if you have any comments, questions, concerns, please leave those down below. In the meantime though, thank you so much once again for tuning in. For now, I'm Connie and I'm signing off. See y'all next time.